my barrel feed bees because I found that it's by far the easiest and most effective way of getting colonies built up um, in their stores in late summer, early fall. And the great thing about it is that it doesn't start them robbing. Um, robbing in New Jersey, as in any area where there is a dearth in the summer, is a killer. But, um, but robbers can come and just take out a colony and leave them nothing. No pollen, no syrup, no nectar, no honey, nothing. Uh, within a matter of hours. And if you have a weak colony, that colony will die. They'll starve to death, especially if it gets a little cool at night and they can't really fly um, and there's nothing coming in. So if you barrel feed your bees and place the open feeding barrels at least 100 yards away from the apiary, so 300 feet at a minimum, the bees think it's a nectar source and they tell each other, oh wow, there's this, you know, this great patch of flowers over there. They're kind of strange looking, you know, big and white and cylindrical, but, but there's great stuff inside, so let's go get them. And there's no robbing because as you notice, you know, in spring when the bees are on a nectar flow, they don't rob each other. There's no need to. There is nectar coming in and that's what this is. So um, I generally budget one five gallon pail for every colony, every full-size production colony that I'm feeding, I would probably budget half a pail per nuke. Um, and they will clean those out of syrup within a matter of a couple of days. Now, of course, you're feeding other critters around too. You know, all of the yellow jackets will come and all the bald-faced hornets will come, not just your honeybees. But if you watch, the barrel feeding station and look at the insects that are on it. Once you put those barrels out, they are primarily honeybees. And once the honeybees are on there en masse, I think that the wasps don't really, you know, they kind of stay clear because there's just too many bees. The wasps come after um, when you, uh, you know, when they're robbed out and, and there's not much left but, you know, dead bodies and dribs and drabs. Barrel feeding essentially means making up open containers of sugar syrup in bulk like this and arranging straw and sticks inside of the buckets so that the bees don't drown and setting them out for the bees to rob out. Um, and it works really well under several circumstances. One, if you, for instance, have packages that you've put on foundation and you want them to draw out the foundation quickly, barrel feeding is a good way to get them to do that. And if you can do that before the major nectar flows, then your foundation's all drawn out and hopefully you'll get some honey in your honey supers when the nectar flows start. Um, the way I mostly use it, because most of my operation has drawn comb already, is I use it during the dearth in summer to bulk up my bees so that they are ready to go into um, winter heavy. And here in New Jersey, it's actually, um, the timing of this stuff is, is kind of interesting. Uh, our major nectar flows here, and this is all regionally specific, you know, it's different from one area to another. But here we have our major nectar flows in May and June, and then we go into dearth usually the second week in July, it's, it's kind of all over but the shouting, and we don't come out of dearth until around September 1st when we begin to get the goldenrod flows. Sometimes in late August we'll get knotweed flows also, but September we'll get a minor flow if we get anything at all. Um, and in July and August the bees are robbing like crazy. So that can be a problem time, you know. You, you risk having bees starve if the spring flows were poor, um, and you risk losing bees because they're robbing, you know, the stronger colonies are robbing the weaker ones, and the weaker ones can just die. Um, so what I do is I will pull my honey around the 4th of July, maybe a week later than that, and begin extracting. At the same time, I put my mite treatments on, and I use a treatment that you cannot have honey supers on at the same time. Um, so, and then I will barrel feed. I'll set out food 
And what happens is all that food coming in builds up the hives so that they're nice and heavy. And it stimulates the queens to lay eggs, so the population increases, and I've got a good population of young, unparasitized bees because I'm treating them for mites. And then come September 1st, when our fall flows start, my hives have 60 pounds of surplus, they have lots of bees, I pull the mite treatments, and then I can put on honey supers and get a fall flow and a fall honey harvest. So that timing works out very well for me here in northern New Jersey. Depending on your own nectar flows, that's going to be different in other parts of the country. But the same, you know, if you analyze what happens when in your neck of the woods, uh, you can sometimes use this technique very successfully. So I'm going to show you how I make, you know, sugar syrup and set this up. There's really a lot of ways to do this. Using five gallon pails is convenient for me because I can throw them on the back of my truck and I can, um, you know, I'm five foot one. So, and, and in my sixties, so I'm not going to be lugging around, uh, uh, 50 gallon drums. Uh, but I can handle a five gallon pail and I can put, you know, close to 20 of these on my truck and take them to a yard and set them out and that works very well. I generally budget one five gallon pail per colony. So if I've got a yard that's got 25 colonies of bees, I am going to set up uh, 25 pails 100 yards away from the apiary. It is not appropriate in all settings and please remember that because it's important. As beekeepers, we must be good neighbors. You know, if you try and set up a feeding station in um, downtown New York City, you know, on the street corner, that's not a good idea. Um, you've got to set up the feeding station in a location where there are not people coming and going all the time because once the bees start robbing out these barrels, there will be tens if not hundreds of thousands of bees surrounding the buckets um, and you just don't want, you know, any member of the general public to have access to that so that they're going to get stung. Okay, I'm going to show, show you how I do this. It's, you know, it's very easy and it goes real fast, which is great. Indy, you don't get to eat the sugar. Um, Basically, I'm putting 25 pounds of sugar in this bucket and filling it with hot water and mixing it up and I'm done. Now, the bees are not looking um, for it to be exactly one-on-one. -on -one. They don't care, but um, as long as it's sweet and there's some food in there, some calories, they will thank you and they will utilize it. I generally fill these up about two-thirds full of sugar and that's around one-on-one. -on -one. It does not have to be exact. I've got my 25 pounds of sugar right there um, and I could just put the water in there but I found it's a lot easier to put the water in an empty bucket and then add the sugar. It just dissolves much more readily and it's easier to mix up. Um, this is hot water, so I set it up so that I actually have access to hot water outside in my hose, and I'm really glad that I did that because it makes things a lot more convenient. Now I filled that bucket up about halfway with hot water. And I'll top it off in a little bit. And now I'm just going to take this sugar. Pour it right in there. And then I take a, um, a paint mixer attachment on my cordless drill and I just stick that in there and I bzzz. Mix it up. Now I like to add a quarter to a third of a cup of my own version of, um, I call this our Goose Rock Farm feeding stimulate, stimulant. It's, uh, 
It's like Honey Bee Healthy, but it's my own recipe. I hate sticky fingers. Occupational hazard. And, um, I'm just going to mix this up. It won't take long. And if there's a little bit of sugar left on the bottom, that's okay. They'll clean that up too. You know, they'll they'll say, well, we like it as syrup, but you know, we can we can take the straight sugar too, no problem. Thank you. So that's pretty good. See, there's like little bits of lumps, but not a biggie. And you need a little bit of hay or straw. Here comes a yellow jacket to check things out. Excuse me, I did not invite you to eat this morning. So you want to put a fair amount of hay or straw in there so that the bees have something to climb on to get out of this. Otherwise, they are going to drown. Um, and what's really important to keep them from drowning is one or more sticks, which must go all the way down to the bottom of this bucket. They've got to have something that um, to use to climb out. And if they don't have that, then, then it's a problem. Now, because the sticks are wood, they tend to float, so you're going to have to push them down. Um, and I, after I put the sticks in, because the sticks tend to push the straw down in that area, I'll always add a little bit more straw right there just to be sure that the girls have something to climb out on. And you'll be, uh, you'll be very surprised how, how few dead bees you'll find in here. If you don't get the setup right, you'll get a lot of dead bees. But if you do it properly, there are very few. We are just pushing the lid down on the side opposite the sticks. And if you saw that, I pushed those sticks down so that I know they're at the bottom of the bucket. The lid protects the syrup from rain. And the bees will find this within a matter of an hour or two. And once they find it, it will just be absolutely covered in bees and they'll rob it out in a couple of days and then there will be nothing but you know straw and sticks in that bucket so works pretty well for me it's easy it's economical it's very efficient um, it's way less labor intensive than filling hive top feeders so if you're in a situation where you can use this to good advantage um, it's, uh, it's a great way to feed bees.